Hi there everyone, Life DIY Josie here where life stands for low budget ideas for everyone. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I will show you some home office organization ideas, tips and hacks. This is my current home office. This is adjacent to the kitchen. This used to be a kitchen nook or dining area and I only have that plastic foldable table that I use as a temporary desk. And this is our entryway. Well, this is not the main entryway. This is the one that we always use, not the front door. This is actually the door leading to our garage and the garden. And I wanna address this location as well and make it more cohesive. I plan to use this room, not just a home office where I edit my YouTube videos, but I also wanna use this as my filming room so that I don't need to go to the kitchen or the kitchen island whenever I do a DIY, which is mostly on top of the kitchen counter. So I also want to address this area here where there's a hodgepodge of things here. And I even utilize a ladder just to hold my plants. So I'd like to make it better and look more professional. I cleared out the room so it's now empty. If you want to watch the full video on how I emptied it, removed the items and clean up, I will be uploading it in my second channel. But for now, I am just going to be focusing on my DIYs here on Life DIY Josie. So full disclosure here, I received two furniture from Yita Home. They approached me for a collaboration I went to their website and chose two of the items that I think would be useful in my room. And one is a dining table because I would prefer a dining table size for my work area since it's not just going to be a desk because the regular desks are too small. For my home office, I'd rather have a big one where I can also do my filming of my DIY. And the other one that I chose is the furniture that is actually marketed by them as a shoe rack, but I will be using it for another purpose here in the entryway. I really appreciate the quality of the products for the dining table. It looks really sturdy and tough and the wood is really heavy. The legs are made of steel. This entryway cabinet, it's also very durable. And I like also that they come with instructions that are clear to follow. Just forewarning for you, follow them in the order that they were presented or else you will regret it. I had done a little bit of shortcut on this cabinet here and then I had to dismantle one side of it because I did it in the wrong order. But for the most part, it's easy to assemble. There are times that you may need a helping hand, so I would suggest having an extra pair of hands to help you, especially in lifting those heavy stuff. So if you are interested in the products that I'm showing here, I do have a direct link for each one of them, but if you go to their website, you have a lot of options there as well. But for these two items, feel free to use the code JOSIE to get an additional 15% off on top of their already discounted price. Now moving on to the organization ideas and hacks, starting off with this dining table slash work desk. To match the aesthetic of the table, I am using this Dollar Tree DIY that I created maybe a couple of years ago, but I know a lot of you are still new to my channel, so I'm gonna insert here a quick snippet of the DIY where I created this using Dollar Tree cube boxes that I inverted, and I will show you the process. You will need eight pieces of these blocks that are from Dollar Tree. I ordered mine online because I couldn't find them at my store, but other bigger stores have them usually at the crafting aisle. And I'll be using this iron label drawer pull that I got at Amazon. It comes in a pack of 20 pieces for $9.99. You will also need wood glue. For this project, in the interest of time, I used my hot glue gun and glue sticks. I suggest using wood glue or E6000 for a stronger hold. I'm going to be applying the glue thinly, as you can see here, almost flat. I'm trying to make sure that there's no thick 
application of my hot glue because when it dries up, I do not want to create gaps in between the two boxes because if it dries up thick, then that would more than likely create some gaps. So I'm trying to make sure that I flatten this as much as possible. And here they are. So next, what I'm going to do is connect the four boxes together by putting them sideways. So what I'm going to do is the first pair I will put sideways and then I am going to be applying hot glue again thin and flat, no blobs again. And then I am going to be connecting the second pair on top of it, making sure that I line up the boxes so that they look even. And then I am just going to connect them all that way. Now what I'm going to do here is invert it so that the drawer's front will go towards the back. Now to put the drawer pull, I'm putting them while my box is laying down and I am just going to be applying my E6000 to the sides where the screws would usually go and then I'm eyeballing it here and I'm going to be attaching all of the drawer pulls and then making sure again that I press them well and I am waiting overnight to cure this. Now this is the next day. I'm just trying each drawer pull carefully and I'm glad that it dried up well. And as you can see, now instead of using wood stain, I'm gonna be using my acrylic paint in nutmeg brown and I'm going to be diluting it in water. So around a fourth cup of water plus maybe 20 to 25 drops of acrylic paint. And then making sure when I was applying, I didn't go too wet on it. But I dried the brush a little bit. There were some rough edges there. So I just used sandpaper. Actually, I used just a nail filer, but you can use medium grit sandpaper. Before you paint, you have to remove the dust, otherwise they will show up. And then I continued painting. So after painting everything and allowing it to dry, I am done and here it is. I love it. See that? Even the interior is painted so that it will look even more high-end if the interior is also finished. I like that this apothecary project that I DIY'd a couple of years ago is it's still working and functioning properly. This is where I keep my brads, my needles, my threads, my yarns, anything that I use for crafting, some beads as well. So if you want to watch the full length video, I will be linking it in the upper right hand corner of the screen and in the description box below. I have the shoe box that I am going to keep. So I'm just going to remove everything. I will use it as is. I'm also going to remove the sticker. I'm going for a rustic industrial look in my home office. So I like to utilize the boxes that I have. This is where I'm going to be putting my recording and filming equipment like this microphone that I use for my video voiceovers, as well as this body camera that I'll use for vlogging. This is also where I'm gonna be keeping some of my other electronics accessories, especially the ones that I use for recording. 
I still have enough room for other smaller boxes of my electronics and accessories. Instead of using this one with the rip, which I can actually glue with the clear glue, I can use this this other way, and this is, will be the one fronting because nobody can see the top. To complement the look of the table, I am going to use this black shoe box to partner with the brown box so that it will blend well with the theme. And this is where I'm going to put my blank note cards as well as my thank you cards and greeting cards. So these are my stationery for doing handwritten correspondences. I love this one in particular because I got this at the Dollar Tree for a dollar back then and this has eight beautiful cards and this is a shoe box I wouldn't even cover the top or the brand name because it looks so nice I plan to stack the black box on top of the brown box but I do have another box that I want to put in between the two and this is the box it's a thinner box but it is almost as wide as the one at the bottom and this one is where my sketch pad and my colored pens are as well as some scrapbooking essentials and my black labels later on i might either flip it inside out so that i don't see that brand sticker but since it's going to be hidden, I don't really need to cover it right now. I can just put it in between the black and the brown box like so. And this is where I'm going to be placing them by my laptop so that all the things that I need on a daily basis will be in easy reach. I often mention here in my channel that going vertical is sometimes the best way to do it when you're organizing things so that's why I stack these three boxes together but there's also another purpose behind it there's a space that I want to cover and that's where my plug is my extension cord and I'll show you how I kind of camouflage it as well so that I will not see the unsightly cords this is often the dilemma when you're using a table that's not really meant as a desk, especially those with exposed legs. And the only option for you often is either to put down the extension cord and all the cords will show up underneath it. But I'd rather put it somewhere else where I can as much as possible hide the unsightly cords. I'm gonna be using this adhesive tape. I will cut pieces of strips to put behind or underneath the power cord or the surge protector and then I will be connecting this extension cord to the frame of this table. I was originally thinking of putting it here onto the sides or underneath but because of the frame or the lip it will be exposed so I have opted to put this at the back of the table so that it will be hidden better. So I'm going to go ahead and cut three strips of adhesive tape and then I'm going to be placing them to the back of the extension cord. I also press each one of them so that I ensure that they are also connected or attached properly to the back of the extension cord. And then once satisfied, I am going to be peeling off the backing of each of the strip of this double-sided tape. And then I will connect the power strip or this extension cord to the metal part of the table not this wood part here that you see it is the metal part that is underneath it and then I will just press it as hard as I can make sure also that you're aware you know this is safety feature also that I have to mention as a responsible youtuber make sure it's not plugged in or powered on and then I am going to connect all of the adapters that I need for my laptop and electronic accessories and here's another tip if you do not want to see the length of the cord if you have a hoop and loop or what you call velcro go ahead and tie your cord neatly to the desired length so that you will not see any cord or parts of the cord dropping to the floor underneath so that you can minimize the clutter here's another packaging box that i can use this is the bottom of 
the dash cam for our car. So I'm just going to use this to stabilize my Dollar Tree pen holders. Because it's conical, it has an angle like this, it's conical. So sometimes I topple it over, right? So what I will do is put them together like this and it won't fit a third and a fourth. And then I have this measuring cup for detergent, laundry detergent. So I'll just put it here to kind of secure it in place and then I can put my paper clips there. So this is just a quick DIY for you if you can find something that fits inside so to keep it from toppling over so there now it is more secured so i can just put here on the smaller one any paper clips that i need so that i can reach for it and then the taller one would be the long items like the pens and the pencils so let me just organize that and then some paper clips and then i can put some erasers here as well there you go Voila. So now this doesn't topple over. So I can just put this here towards the back so that this area here is not obstructed or cluttered. I also have this fabric laptop case or even a tablet case, but this is too big for a tablet, too small for my laptop. And I have this and it's a little bit too flimsy, I think, for laptops or tablets. So I'm just going to be using it for my envelopes and my checkbook. And it will serve a new purpose here. And it looks nice on the desk. And then I bought this uh, Temu. And I like this dusty rose color. It's made of kind of like vinyl leather. Not a real leather, of course. And my daughter gifted this to me. This is a coach notebook. If ever I need to draw things for my projects, if I need to also write notes, it'll be here. So yeah, so those three will go to the top of the desk. So I think it'll best be them stacked on top of each other. Things can make your desk look so nice and professional. I'm adding this small vase with live plants for a bit of ambiance. And I'm also adding a candle in a jar to complete the look. Minimizing the accessories will keep the space clutter free. Another reuse, upcycle or recycled item that I am going to be implementing in my home office is this shoe box that I am going to turn into a charging station. I like that it matches the aesthetics of my home office. It's color black, so I don't need to cover it with anything else. I will just remove these two stickers here. And also what I like about this box is that I don't really need to cover even the top, even though the logo is showing, because I am just going to use it as is. It'll be covered whenever we use the top because I am going to make it a charging station. And the pièce de résistance on this box is this hole here. I don't need to create or drill my own hole for this box because I'm going to utilize this hole to insert the cords from my bulky and unsightly charging hub. So this box will be a camouflage for this hub here that has four USB ports. So first I'm unplugging the main hub and then I'm going to push through the hole from the outside going in because the two prong end of the cord doesn't fit through. And then I am just going to connect it to the hub and what I'm going to do with the rest, the four USB cords, I am just going to keep them plugged into this hub and then I'm going to be pushing each connection through the hole from inside going out. Since the hole is not big enough for all four cords to go through at the same time, I'm doing it one by one. And then I'll be adjusting also the length of the cord so that majority of them are bunched up inside the box rather than showing outside. I will adjust the cord's length that will show up outside and then the ones on the inside, I will wrap up with a hoop and loop, a Velcro tie. 
to prevent them from tangling later on and just keep it a little neat. Then I will place the cover back on top and voila, that's my instant charging station. Let me demonstrate how I'm going to use it. So for example, I have this cell phone here and all I'm going to choose is which connection will work for it. And then I will just plug it in and keep it resting on top of it. It hides, again, the bulky, unsightly hub. And I will place it on the cube organizer shelf that I purchased from Walmart a few years ago. And it cost me only less than, I think, $20. Originally, this cube organizer was placed somewhere in our family room, but I'm glad that it came in black so that it will also complement the color scheme that I am working on in this home office. I placed it next to a wall socket adjacent to my desk. This is now going to be our centralized charging station for my daughter and I. And then we will share this so that we don't have to look for extension cords. It'll be in proper place. Even our rechargeable lamp will be charged here. And the left side of that box will remain open for bigger devices like a tablet. Next, I will be making organizers that will fit in these cubes so that I can use this as my place for filing my folders and my journals, my books, my notebooks, as well as other essentials for my crafting and DIYs. So another upcycling, recycling, or reusing the boxes that I have. These are the shipping boxes from Amazon. I think this one is not from Amazon, but the other one is. This one has the logo of the Amazon brand. And I think a couple of them will fit snugly so. And even though the height is not necessarily all the way to the top, which I like and I prefer so I can see what's inside. And then I have another idea for a box for the one underneath the cube below where I will use the shipping box for cat litter. This box is thicker and more durable than the other two boxes. If it's durable enough to hold two boxes of cat litters, I think totaling 40 pounds for both, this should do the job to hold some of my heavier items and equipment for crafting. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them look more neutral and pleasing to the eyes. So since I'm going for the rustic industrial look, I'd like to go neutral and use brown because my desk is also dark brown, the walnut color. And I am going to just make this as a simple and inexpensive revamp for these boxes. I've done this before when I was redoing my pantry, so I'll do this again. I will be just dismantling this and I will just turn it inside out so that I will have the quote unquote rustic industrial look that plain brown boxes bring. I do understand we are all not the same, so this style might not work for you, the industrial rustic look. So whatever matches your aesthetics, do so. You can still use the boxes, but cover them with something that is going to complement your home decor or the aesthetics of your space. For example, I've used before those Dollar Tree contact paper and they're so pretty, especially the one that has the lattice style that is gray and white. I love that it looks so clean. I use that to create a box for my towels, for my linen closet. I'm also listing on the screen the other items that you can use for decorating or covering or camouflaging those brown shipping boxes. So here's the box after I turned it inside out. I just use hot glue and I also reinforce it with packaging tapes. Also, if you notice, I folded inwards the four flaps so that they can also add strength to the top of the box because when I put things there like heavier items at least this one can double up or reinforce the box i'm going to be using these black labels to label each box 
and then I'm going to be using my chalk marker to identify what is inside each box. For now, I'll just leave them blank, but later on, as I really get the hang of it, I will write on each of the labels. The simplicity of this matches the overall aesthetics. And with the power of editing magic, I've done the same thing with these two other boxes. And here are all the three boxes. Now to put the contents in each box. For the one on the top left, I'll be putting all my journals and notebooks, as well as my diaries. And then on the upper right, I will be putting all my file folders with some important documents or paperwork, billing statements, and the like. And for the bottom drawer box, I will be putting all my tools that I use for my DIY and crafts. It has enough space for more and it is very sturdy. Now for this entryway cabinet, I will be using this for storing our purses or bags as well as our other items that we need for when we're leaving. So I'm not using this for the shoes because I have another solution for the shoes. So this will be our bags that we use daily as well as for going to church and other occasions. And this is also where I'm going to be storing our makeup, accessories, and some other things that we need for whenever we leave the house. And then when we come back home, it's easier for us to put them back in here so that they will be organized. Unlike daily now, whenever we come back home, we just leave them on top of the kitchen counter or on top of the stool or the chair, cluttering the space. So it will eliminate the clutter and then everything will be in its proper place. So I am just testing it out, doing some trial and error where it's more practical for us and more organized. So I have this also, I just thought about it to store or organize our sunglasses. I am going to be using this packaging material from a shipment that I received that I purchased at Amazon and I noticed that it has a top and a bottom that has ridges that it can also be good for holding sunglasses or any other accessories like this one here. So I don't need to do anything else here. I'll just place it inside one of the shelves and then that's where I'm gonna line up all the sunglasses. This styrofoam packaging is also perfect to hold the belts and straps so that they are also in proper place. So again, perfect for breakables like the eyeglasses because it's made of styrofoam. I have also added a couple of plants here and some candles again, a wall art. I also placed a jewelry box and next to it, a small bowl for some mints so that when we need some before we go, we can already grab them. And here on the left is a UV box and this is where we put the car keys and the house keys and anything that we would like to disinfect. Our purses and fashion accessories are now easily accessible as well but out of sight so our home is going to be free of clutter and by lining them up like this it keeps them organized inside this cabinet. Another free organizer is an organizer that comes from gift boxes or even chocolate boxes, especially the holiday chocolate boxes, and they're really pretty. So you can just remove the stickers if they have stickers like this one, but I'm not going to be using the top as, as it was intended for covering the box. I'm just going to be using it to be part of the bottom because this is where I'm going to put my daughter's makeup whenever she needs a quick touch up or if she needs to take some of them with her, it's easily accessible for her. And putting the cover there wouldn't work, especially when she's in a hurry, I know it's not gonna work. So I think this is an easy access where she can just grab and go whenever she needs her makeup. 
and look at that this box matches the cabinet itself the stripes the white and then the neutral or the light brown color matches the door of the cabinet and then the white stripe matches the shelves of the cabinet so it's perfect for this so even if i leave this exposed on top of the shelf outside of the cabinet then it still looks nice but i am going to protect it from dust and dirt so i'm going to keep it inside so that's why I don't really need to put the cover or the top because it's going to be protected inside the cabinet. Now I have one more area that I need to address before we can wrap up. These are the shoes and if you recall this is also where I reuse some of the Amazon shipping boxes because this was sort of our mudroom. I replaced the boxes with this three shelf shoe rack that fits for this corner and it can fit eight pairs of shoes so four for me and four for my daughter and these are the two big bags that my daughter uses when she goes to school. I got this at Amazon for less than $30 and it matches my new desk. And here is the final look of the room. I like how bright and airy it is. And it is very simple. And I hope you got some ideas that will help you also organize your space, whether it's a home office or an entryway. And I'd like to thank Yita Home for providing these two furnitures, the entryway cabinet, as well as the desk slash dining table. And last but not the least, I would like to thank you all for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed this video and please do share it to anyone who may be looking for these types of solution. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of all the tips and ideas that I have shared here. What is your favorite? Let's talk in the comment section. I hope you all have a great day and I'll talk to you again on my next video. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.